Okay, so I was hoping I'd be able to do this on the camera, but for right now I'm gonna do this on my phone and I'll try to do it a little bit better later on an actual longer video. Um, I wanted to go ahead and have something posted though. So we're just showing the basics on how I tie these hand brooms when we make them. Now I've started off with a slip knot. I'm gonna take this apart so I can show you how I'm getting the actual knot tied, first of all. So I've got my grouping of my branches for the hand broom. I'm using sedge in this case. I've got it trimmed already. So I am making a slip knot. So I'm taking this. Here's my cut end. The other end still attached to my spool. I'm taking under. back over and tucking it under itself and pulling it. I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials on doing the actual slip knot itself, but I just wanted to show you real quick. So now that I have the slip knot, I'm going to take my sedge, get it compacted down. I'm using my knee as a good way to get them all packed. You don't want to hold on to the grouping too tightly so that all the ones in the middle can pack down as well. So I've got all of them grouped together. Get it smoothed out with my hand. Now we're taking our slip knot and we're pulling on the long end. Now that cinches this down very, very tightly onto our grouping of needles. But you want to pay attention to the way that the cinch of the slip knot is going. So with this, when we pull to the left, that is tightening it. What we want to do is get it all compacted at the end, slide down where we still have, you know, about an inch or two at the bottom here. We're going to pull it tight, the direction that's actually wanting to go. Then we're going to take and tuck the tail and we're going to take it and start wrapping in the direction that it wanted to tighten itself. So we're going to hold that tail under there so that when we get to that point, it's hidden under the wrapping. Now one thing you want to do as you go is you're going to hold on to the needles very tightly and you're also going to put a lot of pressure into the wrapping so that it's not loose. I need to bring my spool around here. Get what you just Hopefully the camera doesn't fall off. <laughs> Apologies. Again, trying to do this on the phone since my camera didn't make it through the process of trying to record. Okay, so we've got this. We're going the direction that it wanted to tighten in. Now what we're gonna do while we're working on this, especially with the hand brooms that are made out of pine needles, we're gonna keep a hold on this end. And we're gonna pull down and compact it all together really tight. Sometimes you can change the way you're holding it, but see how you get those little spaces in between there when you're wrapping it around? That's the good part about pulling it down is you're getting everything tighter while you're working on it. Do that quite often and that'll help it all stay together. This one. There we go. Sometimes you can just roll the grouping in your hand. Other times you can wrap around with the other hand. Let's see, do a few wraps, then take, pull it down, scrunch it all together. Get a few wraps, scrunch it all together. And this is again, not only the way we're gripping this and the way we're scrunching everything together 
and also how tightly we're wrapping it is going to help hold it all. So we're getting pretty far on it. And what I'll do is show you getting the rest of the way up there to the top of the broom. And then we'll show you how I tie that area. But you'll notice if you go in the direction that the slip knot wants to tighten, it'll help hold that end from slipping. <laughs> There's my hummingbird. Right as I was talking about it earlier, the one out on this end follows me around while I'm doing stuff. It was just behind me up in the pine tree chirping. Maybe the phone caught that. Now see, this is pretty good already. This is a nice little handhold. So I'm going to cut, I'd say about half a foot away from where I'm currently at on the line. Oops. And I'm gonna take and bring it around right here and tuck that under. Once I get that tucked under, I'm going to pull and see how it's tightened up on that end that I tucked under. Now what you're gonna do is bring that end back through your loop and pull. So it's almost like making a slip knot again. And then what I'll do is take and give it another tie. Wrap it around one more time and tie it in that same spot that other knot was. Then I'll take this, trim my loose end off, trim the top with scissors and get this down to a smaller hand broom size. But see this right here, I'm wiggling it around and it's really not moving. And it's pretty good shape. This down here, if you do a lot and you pull down this way a lot, yeah, that'll probably come off right there. But with this, with the hand brooms, most of the time you're gonna have it like this. You're gonna be sweeping this direction, painting, doing texture in this direction. So you should be perfectly fine. You shouldn't have any problem. And with this, if you are sweeping something, you're applying a little bit of pressure, but it's this, it's more of this angle. It's going downward. So you shouldn't have any problem right there. Now, if you're using pine needles, yes, hummingbird, I hear you. If you're using the pine needles, if you use green needles, they're going to dry out, especially if you have them inside, you have them anywhere near where you've got a heater on or something like that. Obviously not anywhere near the heater, but if you're in the same room with one, they're going to dry out really fast. And if you're using green, it is definitely going to shrink down. So you'll notice that the binding on your hand broom will be loose. Usually what you can do is take one end and the other and twist it twist opposite directions and what that does is help tighten everything up. It twists this end around and that end as well and if you twist the opposite direction it compacts it down and gets it a little bit tighter. So the green hand brooms if you do make something like that try to keep them away from it getting too hot and dried out but with this because these are going to stay really nice like this and dried already I don't have to worry about it so much with the sedge. If you use dried brown pine needles, you're good to go as well. You're really not gonna have that shrinkage. They will dry out a little bit, but not as much as if you use fresh green ones. So again, start off with a slip knot, pulled it really tight, tucked that loose end under and started wrapping the direction it wanted to tighten. Pull it and compact it every so often just to make sure everything stays tight. And once you get to the end, you're tying two more knots just to really keep that secure. Then we'll take, trim this loose end, 
pick our scissors and trim this off however long you want it to be. If you cut closer down, you're going to have a tighter grouping of needles, or with this case, the little pieces of sedge. It's going to be the closer to the binding you get, the tighter the grouping is going to be, so it'll be really small together. If you go up this way, you go up higher, they're going to be spread out more. See how this end is very, very spread out, and this end is not, where it's close together? However you want your texture, however you want your sweeping to be with your hand broom, it kind of depends on how you cut this. So again, if I just trimmed right up here, it would be spread out more. It would be um, kind of bushier at the top. But if I cut closer down to where it's wrapped together at, it's going to be a really tighter grouping. Um, just because we're using the base of the sedge, it's a lot thicker. So this is going to be better for large messes or painting texture where you want bigger dots. Like say if you were making a painting of the sky and you wanted to use something like this to represent stars, this would be a really good idea to use this and keep it more spaced out and then dip it in white paint and dab it on the background of your picture and you'll see different sizes but you're going to see a little bit larger dots with something like this. Now if you use something closer to the top of the sedge just because this is the lower third of it, if you use something closer to the top of the sedge where it's finer then you'll see smaller dots. You can take honestly one sedge grouping, you know, cut a few of the plants take the bottom, the middle, and the top, make three different groupings of hand brooms, and do really neat textures for paintings with that. I have not used any of these for sweeping small messes. I really like my pine needles because the needle flattens out at the end, especially once you trim them, and so it's really nice to get in where you might have spilled sugar, or coffee grounds, something like that. But hopefully this has helped anybody that's had problems with actually tying them because I really haven't explained it before. Again, um, apologies right now. This is on my phone. I will get everything charged up and try to make a better video for you with more in-depth explanation. And if this doesn't help anybody immediately, if this is still presenting some problems for you, let me know and we'll try to troubleshoot and do some more things when we make the next video. But for now, hopefully this has helped somebody out there with getting the hand brooms tied. We appreciate you watching, following along with us, and good luck making your own hand brooms. And let us know if you're making them out of pine, sedge, or any other material. And again, thank you for everybody also supporting us on Etsy. While we do provide instructions and support and want you to be able to make these on your own, just to enjoy that crafting experience, we do sell our hand brooms on Etsy. And anybody that's supported us there, we really, really appreciate it. Whether you're using them for sweeping, for painting, or just display, it's really appreciated. If you're interested in finding one, we're on Etsy at Wolf Branch Art. And we'll put some links in the description for you. But again, we'll also include um, the Mother Earth News blog posts and some of our other video links as well in the description so you can see more about how we make these. But for now, this is only the second grouping of sedge that I've made, but the same principle of getting everything tied up. We hope you enjoyed. We thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.